Bienvenidos y welcome to the Biz Bruja podcast, where reclaiming our powerful intuition, our sacred medicina, embracing our magic and healing ancestral patterns, invoke powerful creations in our own well-being, our lives, familias, community, and our businesses. Remembering that our businesses are so important at this time. I'm the creatrix of this blogcast, the biz bruja herself, Vanessa Codornu, a modern day bruja, fourth generation psychic medium, clinical hypnotist, energy healer, and soul biz mentor and coach. An Argentine-American who started reading adults at 16, became a professional intuitive at 22, and now guides creatives, intuitives, healers, and entrepreneurs to break through fears, connect to the practical power of their intuition so they can serve the world powerfully. Hola, mi gente bella. I am so excited for this new moon in Taurus. This new moon in Taurus occurs tonight, May 7th at 11.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is the first new moon of spring, La Primavera, and it comes after the total solar eclipse, El Eclipse Solar Total, no? El 8 de abril, the 8th of April. And so we're at a point where we're not in retrograde anymore, right? At least not with Mercury. We are not because Pluto is in retrograde now, but that's, you know, for the collective. Um, we are in a stellium, and a stellium is when there's three or more planets, they're clustered in a sign, right? Or in a house or in a sign. And the so the stellium that we're in right now is the sun in Taurus, moon in Taurus, Jupiter, and Uranus. Now, this brings a lot of different energies. While I've peered through some of the articles out there and also just some of the memes, of course, everybody's like, get laid, get paid, girl, get laid, get paid, because Taurus is known as this fixed sign ruling the second house of what we value, values, money, right? Uh, luxury, pleasures, the pleasures of the flesh, the pleasures of being alive, the body, the sensual, and slowing down. And so, in one way, because it's a new moon where we get to release uh, the old habits, old ways of thinking, old energies, old things, we get to spring clean, right? The new moon invites us to all that. It's a time of newness and setting intentions and in new initiations. At the same time, it's in a very fixed sign, and then there's four stelliums. And so it's like, hey, initiate new stuff because it's sprem, la primavera, vamos a crear algo nuevo. It's setting intentions. At the same time, too, it's like Taurus. We're like, oh, can I take a nap first? And I don't want to create any mm, misguided images around Taurus because I can tell you I'm a Taurus and I do not nap. I do not overeat. I'm not thinking about food all the time. Um, I know a lot of Tauruses who are like the hardest working people that I know. Um, but you know, all the memes are always showing us sleeping and can I have a nap and can I eat? And, or I don't know, can I lay here in the grass and chew on a piece of hay? And so it's kind of crazy. And one of the things that I discussed with a couple of astrologers was that the Taurian energy does not mean that we are that, but the Taurian energy does invite you to take a moment and take a breath and kind of just breathe in, smell the roses, and take that moment to take in your life. And so when we're thinking of Taurus, it's not sleep all day, eat all day, or lay in a hammock, or get a beauty treatment all day, but it's also a deep invitation that invites us as to how we are showing up for life, right? How are we being? How are we being in this human existence? Are we always rushing and getting shit done all over the place, like some Tauruses and many people do? Are we um, scheduling in time or taking in times intuitively to rest, to take a walk, to chat with a friend if we need it, to take a bath, you know, a healing bath. I love my healing baths, you know, um, to really breathe and assess and allow ourselves to just be joyful and grateful for what we have. So much of the Western world and civilization and capitalismo, capitalism, has us running, you know, to the, buy the next course, buy the next crystal, keep up with the Joneses and the Gonzales and the Diaz and how are we showing up and are we going to the gym and all the things that a lot of us have to deal with. Getting our kids to school, 
showing up for our jobs or our businesses, showing up for our partners, for ourselves, for our families, for our older parents. La verdad que es una locura, everything that we need to do. And on top of it, we have the digital world driving us to, you know, competition, to analysis paralysis, to looking around and saying, pero how can she do it and I can't? Or how is it that they have so many vacations and I don't? All of the things. And as I always say, you know, take a breath in. We don't know how people are accessing the support, the finances, and the travels that they require. It could be coming at a high cost to them, and we don't know. And so this stellium in Taurus, this new moon in Taurus, for me, I invite you today. I know that it comes in tonight, you know, 11, 22 p.m. on May 7th, and I'm going to put this up today. But between today, tomorrow, and even the first week, right, of this um, beautiful new moon in Taurus, just go sit in the grass for a minute. Like pretend being the bovine, <laughs> the cow that's like, okay, let me chill out and look at the sun. Like I'm checking out the, the leaves right now that are turning red for this beautiful tree that we have outside. And I think they say it's like a Japanese maple tree. And so it's red and um, the red leaves are coming in and I'm just looking at it and the wind is like having them flow and they're flowing on the breeze. We all need that moment. We could be driven AF. We have goals. We have vision boards. We have dreams. We have intentions. And yet driving ourselves into the ground and overworking, overthinking, not sleeping enough, not eating correctly is just not going to let us get there. The truth of the matter is that because we are cyclical creatures, that it's important for us to honor the cycles of sleep, the cycles of rest and play. You know, and there are going to be times where I've worked seven days a week, certain times of my life. It doesn't mean that I think we should, but I've done it and then it's paid off. And then I've been able to take time off where I only worked three or four days a week. And so it's important for us to really, no matter how super heroes and superheroes and, you know, poderosos that we are, that we do understand that while, uh, while our soul is like this multi multidimensional, incredibly fantastic, resourceful energy, that we're also in a body and that the body needs tending to. And so if this stellium tells me anything, it is telling me that we need to pay attention. To pay attention, I know there's so much going on in the world. I'm pretty heartbroken. I saw a bit of the Met Gala last night and I was like, oh my God, celebrities have power if they could do something. And, you know, I want to make it very, very clear that I, I love and accept all peoples and I am loving and receiving and inclusive and diverse from get-go. My first circle in 1989, you know, had diverse folks my circles that started in 1999 and went on for 15 years until I started really charging for them included everyone. You'd have an Orthodox Jewish woman and then next to her, a Middle Eastern woman and then three Latinas from Colombia, Peru, you know, a chick from Haiti who had just arrived the year before was looking for a place. And then lots of, you know, Black Americans and Latino Americans, white Americans, etc. Because I'm from New York City and because I worked in Manhattan and lived in Queens, one of the most ethnically rich boroughs in New York, um, I've dated like half the UN, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get married till three years ago, so I have spent my life dating since I'm 15. And I've explored a lot, having Sagittarius on the seventh house for any of you who do astrology, and Mars in Sagittarius, so that tells you a lot. Dating like it's a sport, okay? Dating like it's a sport. I've done it. But now, as I was saying, I welcome and I embrace all. And when I say that I feel very strongly about what is happening in Gaza, you know, we are seeing yet another genocide happening uh, by a country that I think is leveraging the pain of the Holocaust and the story of the Jewish people to have pe some people support this. But we have to really look at it with a bigger eye and a bigger heart. All people need to be safe. The hostages absolutely need to be returned, right? And the massacre, because you never see like soldiers from the Palestinian, you know, the, the Palestinians like fighting. They're just people running for their lives. And so I hate to interrupt. Well, I don't hate. I think that 
I don't dislike to interrupt this lovely um, new moon in Taurus. When I say pay attention, it's also pay attention to the collective. And so it's important for us to also see what's happening. I know a lot of folks out there who want to um, just spiritually bypass what is occurring, but there's no room for that in real spirituality. You know, our ancestors who had indigenous practices they struggled. They had those indigenous practices to survive. That's the reason that they lit the candles and did the dances and used herbs to heal, right? That's what they had at the moment to empower themselves. And so as our ancestors struggled and left places and were enslaved or were um, you know, indentured servants into indentured servitude, which happened to a lot of our indigenous ancestors as Latinos. You know, some of them kept marrying white until they were elevated and then kind of had a higher status in, in you know, a couple hundred years ago. But our Latinos have traditionally and almost always been mixed unless it's like 400 years of a German, you know, in Puerto Rico or Argentina or somewhere. But most of us are mixed. And when we see what is happening in the world with genocide and people trying to find a home, that has to resonate with us. Because as Latinos, a lot of us have left our homelands. And the truth being that even those homelands are not homelands, right? Like part of our lineage could be indigenous and could be Mayan, Aztec, and Inca, right? Um, but then we also have Spaniard and we may have French or Italian, German, English, Irish, um, Siberian, Russian, Eastern European, Chinese, Middle Eastern, Asian, we are so mixed that our peoples come from different places. When I looked at my DNA um, report, I was like, wow, my people were hungry. I was like, my people were hungry because they didn't stay that long in many places. My people, like I'm not just like a, like a half Spanish or 60% Spanish, actually only a third, right? And getting into those percentages is also colonizer-ish, so I don't want to get into it, but saying that there's a lot of other countries and a lot of other ancestors, and they had to leave and they had to move. And part of it is that I also had Jewish ancestors. And so getting to the point that all of us are really truly brothers and sisters, and as much as the media and the world is saying that if you're pro-Palestinian or want to support them, that you're now anti-Semitic, I don't stand by that. I grew up in a Jewish neighborhood and have tons of friends that I love still to this day and wanted to actually um, convert when I was 15, convert to Judaism. And um, as I said, I've gone to more bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs and quinceañeras at one point in my life and have learned the prayers. And I would say that my background in that sitting in the uh, Long Island Federation of Temple Youth, I was part of that from the age of 13 to 18, that I was the only Catholic Latina and spiritualist. And I sat there, and because we sat in circle, that's something that I really wanted to do. I didn't do that in the Catholic Church. And so I honor my own Jewish roots, my Ashkenazi Jewish roots, and probably Sephardic that I don't know about, because Ashkenazi can be traced through DNA, and it's a European um, Jewish person, while a Sephardic is Spaniard, um, but... It could be Iberian, it could be Portuguese, it could be many different. And I'm not the expert of that, so there could be more information. But I'm sharing all this in the middle of the new moon in Taurus because Taurus does rule the earth and it rules our bodies. And even though we're like, yay, let's get laid and get paid and let's create something new and set intentions, there's also a tremendous amount of strife going on in the collective, right? There's a lot of strife going on in Sudan and, and Ukraine and the Congo and Latin America and in Gaza. There's so much strife going on in the collective ways that there's a lot of suffering. And so for all of you who are sharing information or sending money or trying to support in some way, remember to also support yourselves. We are not silos. We are not, you know, islas. We're not in a isla and like we don't see anything else because there's water around us. More than ever, we have access to information and brujería and sanación and espiritismo and all our techniques of meditation and mindfulness are here to help empower us so we can survive this and to send the good juju and to send the good love and to send the good power that this ceasefires and that the other Middle Eastern countries also 
see the ceasefire and also back down, right? There's a lot of almost the energy of third world war. And so with that energy in the air, with the new moon, I invite you to go outside of your crazy work day, right? The collective is like going through hell. Personally, each and every one of us is going through things. And so sit in nature, go outside, plant your feet on the earth, do something for yourself, eat a meal that reminds you of your ancestors, order a meal that reminds you of your ancestors and take a breath. Allow yourself to cry the tears of your ancestors who feel triggered by what's happening in the world. Allow yourself to rejoice that you made it through Mercury retrograde and all these eclipses and all these challenges with people and yourself and work and life and health and abundance and all the things that all of us struggle with, right? Um, I felt a lot challenged by like people around me who were rude to me during that time. And I was like, why are you being rude? Don't make me come out my face, um, which I really didn't, but still I was tempted to. There was a lot going on and still going on for us. And so I invite you to take that moment, even though all the things are happening in our personal lives, in the bigger picture, to just breathe and to feel yourself being part of this grand plan. And so just allowing your eyes to gently close now and feeling your feet on the ground right here on the floor, wherever you are. And if you're driving, don't do this, please. We know better. If you can get outside, get outside for a moment as you listen, place your feet on the grass as you allow yourself to remember that you're truly una criatura de la tierra, even though we're cosmic, we're cosmic criaturas, but right now we're also criaturas who came into bodies on this earth to experience being a multidimensional being with a body that has a time stamp, right? With a body that has a time where we will leave it. This is a temporary vessel. This is a once in a lifetime ride. We incarnate and have past lives and live existences. And yet we are Vanessa in this lifetime. And you are Anna and Maria, you know, and Yolanda and all of the people that are listening in this lifetime. And as you close your eyes and go deeper, whether you're inside, just feeling your feet on the ground or outside, feeling your feet on the grass, breathing in and giving thanks to Pachamama, Mother Earth. Gracias, Pachamama. Gracias for holding us. Gracias for loving us, even though at times we forget your presence and ignore you and litter you. We love you so much and we give so much thanks. Thank you to our bodies. Thank you to our ancestors who have walked before us and continuing to breathe deeply and allowing ourselves to be las criaturas de la tierra, to allow ourselves to be who we are, meeting ourselves here as we are. As we continue breathing deeply and allowing ourselves to be who we are, knowing that Taurus is also the sign of peace, peace with oneself, the energy of abundance, the energy of health, the energy of creative flow, the energy of sensuality and fertility, the energy of creation, of building, of expansion on this earth. As we continue to breathe deeply and connect to our mind, body, and spirit, now giving thanks to our bodies that have survived so much, all the things we've been through, and currently on the planet here at this time, and giving thanks to our money and to our abundance that comes in so many different ways, abundance of relationships, of love, of ideas, of strength, of power. I give so much thanks for my abundance of health and energy. I get to do so many things because of this energy that I do have. So breathing into it and giving thanks for what we do have, giving thanks. As we breathe into that, allowing yourself to go even deeper, and asking the energy of Venus, which is ruler of Taurus, hmm. and asking our inner selves, what do I most need to know about myself at this time? What do I most need to know about myself at this time? As we continue breathing in, Allowing ourselves to receive through sensation, word, feeling, sentimiento. And what do I most need to know about the world right now? And so breathing in, what is the message for the world? And I'd love for you to share wherever you see this podcast, what's the word that came up for the world, if there's any guidance to say, to let me know what you receive, to share the messages with the world, for the world, through the podcast. Just breathing in, hay un mensaje 
para la tierra en este momento? Is there a message for the earth now at this time for the people of the world? And at this time, whether you're inside or outside, imagining Pachamama, Mother Earth, giving us this beautiful golden light, una luz profunda que entra por los dedos de los pies, the feet, the toes of the feet, going into the legs, going into our lower back, going into our chest, going into our hearts, going into our heads, and expanding like a beautiful golden shield, an auric shield all around us, and allowing it to expand and asking that our dreams, that our process, that our transformation be held. And as the energy expands, imagining that it's going into the earth and it's expanding to all the places that need our help, whether it's Colombia, Sudan, El Congo, Uruguay, Costa Rica, Sudan, Congo, Gaza, Israel, todos los lugares que necesitan amor, todos los lugares que necesitan positividad, ayuda, evolución, Sanación, all the areas, all the places, all the countries that need love and, and healing, evolution, spiritual evolution, food, shelter. And now allowing that message of peace to come from our own heart into our families, into our work, into our bodies, into our lives, and then expanding into the world. And as we breathe in, knowing that this is also a time of seeding not only peace, but seeding our goals, seeding goals and intentions that will take six months to be seen. And as we continue breathing deeply, allowing yourself to imagine peace in the world, and then going more personally into your own mind and spirit. And as you breathe into that, allowing yourself to repeat the I am statements as if it was the present. It is now safe for me to be abundant. I am safe. I am abundant. I am successful. I'm seen. I'm recognized. I'm supported in all ways. I'm loved. I'm witnessed. I am loved and held by family. Business flows with ease. Creativity flows. It is safe for me to be sensual and explore my sensual self, to engage in beauty and pleasure to take time out, to play more. It is now safe for me to, and just fill in the blanks. It is now safe for me to, it is now safe for me to. As you continue breathing in, knowing that the energy and the power of Taurus to create, to build is within each and every one of us. All of us have Taurus in our chart, even if it's just on our house and forming that part of our lives. I'm taking another deep breath in now and giving thanks. Gracias, Pachamama. Gracias, Madre Tierra. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you to those who walk before us. Thank you to the creations that are already manifesting, to my seeds that are already blossoming. It is now safe for me to be all that I am. It is safe for me to embrace my powerful creativity, my powerful abundance, my powerful healing. Así será. Amen. And so it shall be. Ashe, aho, and amen. Ooh, and gently opening your eyes whenever you're ready. So folks, I didn't expect to take us in without much notice, but yes, there we went. And knowing that life is everything. Life is the leaves that are dead at the base of some of my trees and also the buds that are blooming at the same time. Life is ending and life is beginning all at the same time. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. That sneeze wanted to punctuate that fact. Y que estamos siempre en ciclos, siempre estamos en fases de la vida. And that even though something may seem like it's harsh or bad because it's an ending, it doesn't mean that it's bad. Endings come in so there could be beginnings. And change comes in so we can level up. Remember that so many of us ask and beg and seed and plant and set intentions and grow and create vision boards, but our hands are tightly held. We, we close our fist and yet we say, I want this, I want this, but the fist is closed tightly around what we have. And we have to take our little grubby paws, as I say, <laughs> open our hands. And I hear you. Some of you are like, well, I worked really hard for what I have and I worked really hard and I'm scared. And I understand. I've been there. And it's also important to ground into that knowing that loss and change and shifting is not there to disempower us. That's our ego that's terrified, right? When we drop into that eternal part of who we are to our soul, our soul is like, don't te preocupes, don't worry. It hurts right now and it's hard. 
that something new is already blossoming. It's already on its way. It's only when we hold on to the old. It's only when our mind convinces us that we need the old thing to exist or to be that we are not allowed to receive our blessings. Because how can we have an open third eye or open heart or open mind or open hands to receive and take action or open feet, right? Feet that are willing to move through the changes that need to be moved. And I'm saying symbolically, if we are stuck in trying to hold on to the past. And so know that this new moon will drive you to or invite you into more pleasure if you allow it and more connection to the nature. It will invite you to build upon different parts of your life and your business and your work and your self-care practices and your beauty rituals. At the same time, it's going to ask of you to release what doesn't serve. We've got Uranus and Taurus shaking shit up. We've got Jupiter expanding the power of creation. The moon, our emotions are like, oh, okay, I kind of like it where I am. I'm scared. The sun is like, hey, we got to move into peace and we've got to move into change with ease. And so mandándoles mucho amor. If you want to share with me what came up during this meditation, Thank you. And I have a green candle here. I'm going to actually light it for all of us. Les mando mucho amor. May we all grow, have clarity, have peace, have protection, be safe in our manifestations here on earth and continue to seed and grow peace and love and justice for all. Mucho, mucho amor. Y les abrazo con todo mi corazón. Thank you so much. Gracias.